Hello everyone! So I know this topic was brought up quite a while ago, but I didn't get a chance to discuss it before I went on vacation. So we're gonna talk about it right now, because it's still kind of relevant, or at least will be, when the next raid rolls around, if nothing changes. The topic is the Titan class, mainly with regards to how they're underperforming in PvE compared to the other classes in group and endgame play. Titans in solo play have things pretty good, especially with some upcoming buffs to the bottom striker tree. Sunspot Hammer Titans are quite potent with a lot of ability uptime and Heart of Inmost Light. Middle Tree Sentinel can do some really big chain damage, and Striker Titans for the most part are strong with Insurmountable Skull Fort in nearly every tree. They have good ability synergy and do pretty well against large groups of enemies. But pretty much all subclasses in Destiny have good solo capabilities. Titans in endgame content, like Nightfall High Score Runs, if you can even call that endgame anymore, and Raids are essentially Melting Point, aka Hammer Strike, bots. That's the only thing that they really offer. Now, Melting Point's really good, 50% bonus damage taken, and with Hall of Fire Heart and a couple of impact mods, you can apply this almost all the time easily. So it makes sense as to why Titans are Melting Point bots. What they provide is really good. With Hunters now able to give this same debuff via Flawless Execution without needing a cooldown, even that is in jeopardy for the Titan. Although you do need to use Spectral Blades for this debuff, which isn't as popular in PvE. The Spectral subclass branch in PvE as a whole is not as good as Top Tree Hammers, which is why I do think a Titan doing Melting Point is better than a Hunter doing it. In Last Wish, Melting Point status effects are really good basically everywhere, whereas in Scourge of the Past, I don't think Titan really brings anything substantial to the table at all in terms of almost anything. Essentially, Titans are just kind of being phased out of their usefulness in PvE due to the fact that anything they can do can be done better by Hunters and Warlocks. Weapons and Blessing of Light are gone from Ward of Dawn, yet Well of Radiance does both at the same time without needing to dip in and out of the well. This feeling of uselessness is partly due to exotics. Hunters and Warlocks have a fair amount of exotics that really boost the potential of their supers. Celestial Nighthawk is a fairly obvious one that, at least in raids, is basically an extra 500,000 to over 1 million damage instantly, assuming you hit a headshot. Raiden Flux essentially doubles the potency of your arc staff, it's more useful in strikes than in raids though. Orpheus Rig gives you near infinite tethers when used well. Shards of Galnor used to be quite insane, not as much anymore, I suspect they might get a slight buff at some point in the future. Warlocks have the newly buffed Skull of Dire Ahamkara for Nova Bomb, giving tons of energy. Phoenix Protocol can give infinite Wells of Radiance when used in the right conditions, and Lunafaction Boots, while not as sexy of an exotic, are still quite valuable. Geomags don't have as much of an impact compared to the other exotics I just listed, but are still pretty good. Titans do not have a lot of exotics that help their supers in the ways that these exotics help. Doomfang Pauldrons are the only example I can find on a Titan that give a substantial boost to your super, and those rely heavily on clearing tons of adds to keep going for a while, so in group play, you really need to take the lead. Sentinel Shield's single target damage in high-level environments is forgettable. Hall of Fire Heart revolves around not using your super, giving you a ton of ability usage instead, allowing for high uptime of Tempered Metal and Melting Point, but Tempered Metal isn't really that essential to endgame content. Syntheseps do give a flat super damage bonus, but it requires you to be surrounded in order to get that bonus, and it is rare to be surrounded in the current raids where you would actually want the damage boost or need the damage boost. Syntheseps were really good in Leviathan, but most Last Wish bosses are shredded already by Lord of Wolves or Thunderlord, and Scourge of the Past only has one actual boss where Whisper of the Worm does more than fine. Striker Titans get a lot of ad clear with Skullfort, which excels in something like Gambit or certain strikes, 
but in raid activities and high level content is just either outperformed, not worth the risk, or just not necessary. Ursa Furiosa can give back some energy via blocking, but the amount of times where it is highly valuable to block damage or where you need to block damage are few and far between. Most of the time, blocking is a spur of the moment kind of thing just to save yourself. Reckoning tier three with Blackout utilizing Ward of Dawn is refreshing, but that's a very specific circumstance. Titans just do not have those it factor exotics when it comes to supers. Their supers are also just kind of underwhelming compared to the other classes. Thundercrash is incapable of one-shotting the Vault Knights in Last Wish during the Vault, and pales in comparison to the new Slova Bomb. Wouldn't mind seeing Thundercrash get buffed with a damage increase depending on how long you've been airborne. Sentinel Shield is a duplicate of Arc Staff with hit detection reminiscent of a toddler trying to hit a fastball. Hammers aren't too bad, but the only time they're really hitting hard is when you're hitting a target that's really far away so that they have time to charge up. Burning Maul has been very underwhelming throughout Forsaken, and while the throwing hammer of that subclass branch is a really fun ability with good benefits linked to it, running back and forth and picking up a hammer isn't exactly efficient compared to just shooting a gun at an enemy. Fist of Havoc had a brief time where it could go infinite, and that has since been nerfed. Ward of Dawn has been incredibly underwhelming in Destiny 2 in general, save for Reckoning Tier 3 Blackout and maybe siphoning moats as an invader in Gambit Prime. And while it's cool to have Weapons of Light back, it's not as exciting when you're the Titan just having to stand there holding up a shield, potentially reducing the overall damage of your team depending on the size of your fire team. Essentially, what this all boils down to is you only need a Titan for Melting Point. And again, a Hunter can already do that. I definitely wouldn't mind seeing some Titan Exotics get tweaked to have a greater impact on their supers. Eternal Warrior could be made into literally anything buffing Striker Titan, like being the Skull of Dairahamkara or Orpheus Rig for Striker Titans, Kepri's Horn or Ashen Wake for buffing Sunbreakers, Helm of the Quiet One for Sentinels. These are all underperforming exotics that I don't think anyone would mind getting a new ability in place of or in addition to their current one. I'm not saying to literally just copy some stuff that Hunters and Warlocks have, but there's a reason those exotics are so good. They boost your supers with a ton of damage or give back tons of super energy, and Titans are missing those kinds of exotics. Now, whether or not some of these exotics are too strong in general for the game or create balance issues is a topic for another time. Getting a lot of supers is really fun and really good, but creates a situation where most other exotics are just blown out of the water if they don't do something that has that same level of impact. Getting infinite Nova Bombs or Tethers is kind of tough to beat. Anyway, that's my spiel on Titans. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.